Ah, good morning to all of you. It's uh, such a great day and we're so blessed here in St. Helena Bay. Um, although I know there are many people who, who are ill, many people who are touched and affected by the virus and therefore I want to urge you to please wash your hands and wear your mask and please to keep a distance. Um, people are dying and uh, we think of them and we pray for them. Before we start off, let's just close our eyes and we turn to the Lord. Dear Lord, our God, we turn to you as our Saviour, as the Creator, as the one who has us in your hands. You are the one that provides for us and we want to praise your name and worship you in this morning. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless us and that you would keep us and even through the, the wonderful story that we are about to read from the Bible, that you would touch us and lift us up and guide us in our lives. Especially in this time of tribulation, Lord, we pray that your word will be our strength. Thank you that we can be in your midst and that we know you are present with us and that we can that we can trust in you. Please bless us now. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, we are going to read from Genesis chapter 32 and uh, I'm, uh, I thought we should read from verse 20. It's the story of Jacob at the Jabbok River. Um, verse 20 says, I will pacify him with these gifts. That's now Jacob sending gifts to his brother Esau. Um, I'm sending on ahead. Later, uh, when I see him, perhaps he will receive me. So Jacob's gifts went on ahead of him, but he himself spent the night in the camp. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maidservants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of Jabbok. After he had sent, across, uh, sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. And then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go, unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. And so Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw the face of God. Peniel means the face of God. I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. And therefore to this day the Israelites do not eat the tendon um, attached to the socket of the hip, because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. We are, that, is, that is the word of the Lord. Um, I need to tell you the story in a, in a different way. Uh, we should start way back so that you can understand the context of what happened here. You see, Jacob and Esau was the sons of Isaac. And uh, Jacob, Esau was the firstborn. Esau was the firstborn of the two. And Jacob decided to, uh, to get the benefits of the firstborn. To, 
sort of get all the, the, the estate of his father. And so what he did is he, he crooked him. He went and he took a, a goat's skin and he put it on his arms because he knew Esau was hairy. And then he went to his father and his father, his blind father, uh, touched his arms and, and, saw, and thought it was Esau. And then he gave him all the blessings. He sort of uh, um, frauded, frauded the, the testament, the estate. And that's what Jacob did. Um, he was a fraudster, corrupt in our days. <laughs> now, all along, Jacob had these guilt feelings about what he did. All his wealth and everything he had did not help much. He lived his whole life in this guilt feeling within his heart. He tried everything to get rid of it. He built an empire for himself with lots of goats and sheep and, and cattle and, and so forth. But even that did not take the guilt feelings away. He felt this guilt within his soul all the time. Now somewhere along the line, the chapter says, starts off with this, that he met some people that he called angels. And they sort of caused that he wanted to go back to his land of birth and go back to where Esau lived. And on his way back, it became, it became close. The reality sunk in and he started fearing. He did not know how to handle it. And so what he did is he, he sort of sent gifts ahead, trying to uh, entice um, Esau not to be angry at him and not to kill him. <laughs> so he sent... Um, some goats and he sent some sheep and he sent some cattle and camels and donkeys and so on. Um, trying to, to console Esau. And then eventually um, he came to the Jabbok River. Now the Jabbok River, you have to understand Jabbok, the Jabbok River. It's, it's notorious. It's scary. It's a it's a deep ravine, much like the ones you get here in the Cedar Mountains. So if you, if you, it's, it's a job to get right through it. And as this daunting ravine lies before Jacob, the reality of him meeting his brother lies before him. And he has to cross through, he has to get to it. So later the night, he took everything he had his wives, his children, his slaves, and everything he had, the Bible says, through the Jabbok River, through the, the brook. And uh, eventually, only he, him, him himself stayed behind, all alone. When you have to deal with your guilt feelings, um, no earthly possessions matter anymore. It's only you. You alone. And then suddenly, he was in a fight. In a battle for his life. Against a man that he did not know. Who attacked him. And he was in this struggle. And he was wrestling with a man that he did not know. And it was, it was getting really fearsome. And, and, and he, was, he was fighting for his life in this battle. And the battle carried on and carried on right through the night. In fact, it was so bad that, that he feared that he would be overcome by this man. And then as the battle continued, he suddenly realized, but it's not a normal man he's fighting. This is not a man. This is God himself. You must know, brothers and sisters, that if you've done something wrong,
against your brother or your sister, against other people, you will have to deal with God. It's Him that you will answer to. Nothing else will matter. And that's exactly what happened to Jacob. He was in this fight and he realized he cannot get out of it. He has to pass by through God. What happens then is that when you get to this point where you, where you, where you land in this struggle, in this battle with God, it changes you. Not only physically, I mean, he was, he was limping after that. You get scars if you have to cross the Jabbok and cross the path of God. But it changes you inwardly. It changes your being. Jacob's name changed. And that's very significant. You see, the name Jacob means fraudster and dishonest man. And then after God blessed him, he said, you will now be known not as Jacob anymore, but as Israel, man of God. When the Lord touches you, when you, when you conquer and you go through the struggle with God, it changes your being and you become a child of God, a man of God, and you will be known as Israel. That's who you will be if you mended your case with God. An amazing thing then happens to Jacob. As he crosses the Jabbok on his own, after this victory and changing within himself, the sun rises, the sun comes up, and it's as if there's new life, as if there's light again up ahead. If you read further in the next chapter, you will find there in verse 4 that the two brothers meet and they embrace each other. And Esau asks his brother, now, why did you give me all these presents? And he said, well, I tried to console you, to calm you down. And then Esau said, but you did not need to do that. I have enough possessions of my own. You can keep that. And everything is fine again. My brother and sister, the Jabbok River is there for each and every one of us. We have to cross that. Whenever you've done something wrong to who, whoever, turn to God and sort it out. Cross the river and get to your brother and fix it. In this time that we live now, it's important that we do that. The good Lord expects it from us. He's waiting for you at the Jabbok River. It might seem daunting and scary, but the Lord is there with His open arms in Jesus Christ, loving you. Come on, turn to the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, thank You that we can turn to You. Thank You, Lord, that we can go through this Jabbok River and that you change our hearts and that you, you change our lives and we, you make us new people. Please do it for each and every one of us, Lord, and help us to make amends what we have done wrong. And please bless us, Lord. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Amen.